Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this Sunday morning in June, the last Sunday morning in June, Lord God, where you are going to warn us and exhort us and about being in your presence, Lord God, where there is safety and protection and fullness of joy, Lord God, and pleasures forevermore. And so, Father, I submit myself to you and I ask you to have your way. I give you the glory, the honor, the praise as do your holy name. And I thank you, Lord God, uh, for considering me a vessel of honor. I now submit myself to you. If there's anything in me, Lord God, any unclean thing, any sin seen and seen, uh, unseen, known and unknown that's in me, I confess it all. Purge me, Lord God. Clean me up, Lord God, and use me for your glory. So now, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to come forth, to, to rise up and uh, teach us and, and uh, minister to us, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we need you, Lord. And we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Hebrews 10, 25, the scripture says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Uh, he said, let me read it one more time, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That is coming together uh, in Bible study, coming together on Sunday morning or Saturday, whichever day you choose to worship. Uh, I choose to worship 24 seven, but you know, some people do choose that to come in corporate, coming together, assembling together. And uh, so not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. What he said is many people don't assemble, uh, but he says, you have come together to exhort one another. And that word exhort means to warn. The word exhort in this case means to warn, warn one another. And so much the more, that means to get together even more as you see the day approaching, which is why we have now gone back to every Wednesday Bible study because it's in the word of God. He says, come together even more as you see the day approaching. What is that day? The evil day. That day is upon us. And we're going to see a lot going on today. We're going to see uh, the Lord separating, I believe, I truly believe, the sheep from the goat. We're going to see a great apostasy because there's many false prophets out there deceiving many. And so I want to go to Jeremiah uh, 6, 16. I'm going to read the first verse out of the um, New Living Translation, I believe it is. Hallelujah. I have to go to my Google here and find it. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thank you, Lord. So while you go to your Jeremiah 6, 16, uh, I need the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. Okay. There we go. And in that it says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. People, I want to tell you that we are at the crossroads of life and of Christianity, where there are many false prophets and a lot going on in the world. I'm not even talking about what's going on in the world. I'm talking about what's going on in the name of God. And we have to get back to the ancient path, to the old way, 
And this is what the Lord says. This in Jeremiah was one of the prophets. You know what prophets did? Prophets warned. Amen. So Jeremiah warned, he said, this is what the Lord, the capital L-O-R-D says. This is what he says. Stop. And look around. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Because this is the time where you either going to go to the right or to the left. You either going to be found with the Lord or not. If you listen to a bunch of voices out there that's saying God said this, God said that, and these prophets, there's a lot. The Bible says many, Jesus told us, many false prophets shall arise in the world. So what you need to do, what we need to do is ask for the old godly way, the holy way. And then once we find it, walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your soul. And that path is reading the Bible, studying to show yourself approved, assembling yourself even more these days and getting yourself, learning how to get yourself in God's presence. Because I'm telling you, if you're a true Christian, that's where you belong. He will prepare a table for you in the midst of your enemy in his presence. That's where your peace, your love, your joy, the green pastures, the still waters, rest for your soul, all of that, no matter what's going on in, in the world, and in all that stuff out there that's going on, because there's too much going on right now in the name of God. So let's get back to the old godly way. Let's listen to this old prophet in Jeremiah. Now we're going to go, I'm going to go to my King James Bible. I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to read from Jeremiah 6, uh, 616 on down in the King James Version. Thus says the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But look at the last sentence. But they said, we will not walk therein. So this is a warning. And just like I, uh, Jeremiah was warning back then, I am warning you today to look for the old path and walk in it, the good path. And don't say, we will not walk therein. I'm gonna take you to the New Testament version here in a minute. This is Old Testament, but let me tell you something. God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. In verse 17. So they said, we will not walk therein. Also, God said, I said, watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Wow. Therefore, because you won't hearken or you won't walk in the old path, that good old way, and you look, you've got itching ears and looking for this one, that one, another to teach you. Instead of what the word of God says, following after this prophet and that prophet, verse 18, therefore hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose comes there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice is sweet unto me. The Lord says, all oh, your praising, praise me with your lips and not from your heart, not from holiness. He said, I, I, I don't want nothing to do with that. What purpose is that? What good is that to a holy God? And what good is that to you? That's not gonna get you into heaven. The good old path, the holy way is going to get you into heaven. Verse 21. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I, this is God, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Look, oh, you people that you going to reject God. I'm warning you not to do that. 
verse 22. Thus says the Lord, behold, a people come from the north country and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea and they ride upon horses set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. This is prophesied for our day too, believe it or not, 24. We have heard the fame thereof, our hands wax feeble, anguish has taken a hold of us, and pain as of a woman in travail. God, uh, go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way for the sword of the enemy, and fear is on every side. Didn't Jesus warn us about what's coming in Matthew 24? O oh, daughter, 26, of my people, gird thee with sack sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning, M-O-U-R-N, as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us because so much place is given to the devil through the church. Verse 17, 27, I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that they may know and try their way. We're supposed to be an example. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron, they are corruptors. The bellows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melts in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. They're just compromising their Christianity, rejecting God, ain't got time for God, rejecting holiness, don't have time for the word of God. Verse 30, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord has rejected you. Do you know that if you reject God, that he will reject you? The very best thing that could ever happen to you is God. And you will not walk in his ways. You will not assemble yourself. If you re re reject God, you're going to be called reprobate. That means he's cast you off. Oh, you say, oh, that's Old Testament. All right, let's go back to Hebrews 10. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's go back to Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Today we are exhorting. That means warning. It's time out for itching ears, putting your hope and your dreams in a man or a woman. Get back to the old path, the old way, the way of holiness. Amen. That's where you're going to find rest for your soul. You're just going to wax worse and worse, following after men, following after whatever teacher you want to hear. You don't want to hear the pure word of God. We, you won't have it. Oh, but that's Old Testament. All right, here we are in Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, back where we was. Hebrews 10 and 25. This is what the Lord is saying today. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Again, exhortation meaning warning one another. So I am warning you today. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day is approaching, the evil day, the day, the day when the evil day comes, the Lord's going to come and snatch some of us out of here and some going to be left. For if, now this is New Testament, New Testament, if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorrow punishment suppose you shall he be thought worthy 
who had trodden under the foot the Son of Man and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. God says, get back to assuming yourself. And you said, we will not. God says, you are trodden under the foot, the son of God. He says, you have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified unholy. That's the word of God. That's the New Testament. The same warning that Jeremiah gave those people in the Old Testament. I'm giving it to you today. Verse 30. For we know him that has said, vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. The Lord shall judge his people. He judged them in Jeremiah and cast a stumbling block before him. And he, when he judged him, he said, because you rejected me, I reject you. New Testament, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Go down to 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. And what that is saying is you that have your hope in God and in nothing less than nothing else, keep your hope in God. For the love of God, keep your hope in God. For the love of God, for not, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. For the love of God, Study to show yourself to prove unto God. For the love of God, get yourself to church. For the love of God, confess your sins. For the love of God, repent. For the love of God, get back to the old godly way, the holy way, the old path, the ancient path. For the love of God, for the love of God, love of God. Because the day is approaching faster than we know. I feel it. I see it. The day is approaching fast. Verse 36. For you have need of patience. After that, that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. Don't get your eyes off of Jesus. I don't care what nobody do. I don't care mother, father, sister, brother, wife, husband, children. I don't care preacher, pastor, apostle, prophet, false prophet, evangelist, or teacher. You better keep your hope in Jesus. That's the godly path. I'm telling you, because I'm I'm researching and I'm seeing what's going on. I'm not even talking about the world. I'm talking about what's going on in the name of God. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back from God, God said, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And this is New Testament. This is not Jeremiah 16. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't play with God. When you play with God, you messing up. You messing up bad. When you, when you do things in vengeance because you want to hurt somebody, you only going to hurt yourself. Verse 39. Here's some good news. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. When you draw back, you draw back into perdition. You become reprobate. Reprobate means when you reject God, God rejects you. And I don't care how much you call him Lord, Lord. We already saw Judgment Day. What many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not preached in your name? 
Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And even cast out devils in your name. And the Lord Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Praising God with all your breasts showing so that the, the poor little brethren that's trying to get out of pornography can just see you and not God. Yeah, I'm telling it. Showing all your everything that belongs only for your marriage husband to see. And, and seducing one another, men and women, saying all kinds of things. And call yourself a Christian. When you reject the old path, the godly path, the way of holiness, you rejecting God, you reprobate. And God says, if you reject me, I will reject you. Let's go back to Jeremiah 6 one more time, and then we'll get into uh, the lesson. Of, this is just an introduction. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Again, today is a day of warning. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and so much the more as you see the day of approaching, the evil day, and even the day of judgment. Amen. Jeremiah 6. And verse 30, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord has rejected them. Because when Jeremiah said in verse 16, stand ye in the ways and see, look around you. We at the crossroads, look around, all kind of stuff is happening. And when you see that, ask for the old path. Where is the good way, the godly way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they said, what did they say? We will not walk therein. You're going to reject God. You're going to reject God and his way to follow after some false prophet who shall deceive many. You're going to be in that group. I am warning you not to do that. And so I'm getting to this lesson that I have on paper for y'all that I'll send to you. For the love of God. For the love of God. You see, it's the love of God that constraineth us. That means keeps us from sinning. When you love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, which is the first commandment, you that stops you from sinning amen philippians 2 12 sister nona could you read that philippians 2 12 it says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling it don't matter what your mama doing your father your uncle your husband your children your wife it don't matter what they're doing you need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Fear, fear and trembling what? Of God. Don't care what man do. Okay, Sister Nona, please. Philippians 2.12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday. Not just in the, the presence of, of people, uh, uh, your pastor. But always. When ain't nobody around, you're in God's presence. Praying to him in God's presence. Reading his word. You don't wait till Sunday to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You better seek God. He might come. Uh, okay, we're in church today. He might come on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday. We need to, in his presence, I'm going to tell y'all something. This may be a secret to some of y'all. 
it may be news to some of y'all. Some of y'all know this. In, your, in God's presence, if you're a Christian, that's where you belong. That's where you belong. That's where you find your peace, your joy, your stability. Because if you go by what all these people are doing, you're going to need some rest for your soul. You don't have to wait till Sunday to get it. Not in my presence only, but also in my absence. People talk, oh, don't do that. Oh, the pastor goes, the pastor going to see. God looking at everything. That always gets me when people say that. The pastor going, the pastor going to see. Who is he? Who is she? But a man or woman, just like you. It's God who we need to work out our own salvation in fear and trembling before. Warning, exhortation, walk in the old path, the good path, the path of holiness, the godliness. Amen. Amen. No relationship, people. No relationship is as precious as the one between you and God. No relationship. None on this earth is as precious as the one between you and God. Isaiah 54, 17. Can I ask Deaconess uh, Jefferson if she could read that? Isaiah 54, 17. And Deacon Max, if you could read John 15, 15. Isaiah 54, 17. No relationship is as precious as the one between you and God, saints. Deaconess? Yeah, here, Pastor, I was just reading it from the uh, NIV 5417. Yes, please. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the of the servant, and this is the from declares the Lord. And I Amen. Thank you. Thank you. In Isaiah 5, 54, 17. God says this to us, and many Christians use it that know they ain't serving God. It's not for you. Listen, there's qualifications to this scripture. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every time that rises against you in, uh, in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of who? Somebody say in the church? Servant. The servants of the Lord. Not the half-steppers. Not those that reject God. Not those that say, Lord, Lord, and do whatever they flesh tell them to do. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me says the Lord. It's time for us to understand who God is and work at our own salvation with fear and trembling. I don't care what nobody doing. We need to serve the Lord. And by that, I don't mean you need to be running here and there doing two four, seeing how much works you can do. I mean, you need to be in God's presence, worshiping him and loving him and telling him, thank you, Lord that I don't do the things I used to do and you got a good plan for me and I'm waiting on you to direct my steps and you holy, one thing I know I'm on my way to heaven, you tell me what to do tomorrow, today, being led by this, led by that, led by this, and rejecting God. Those of you who re reject God, that's crazy. You think you can reject God and go to heaven? I just read you the scriptures in Hebrews 10 and Jeremiah 6. If you reject God, I don't care if you is saying, Lord, Lord, he's going to reject you. New Testament. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Those that love God. And those that the love of God keeps them. That's what it means, the love of God constrained us. It's the love of God that keeps us from doing evil. 
when someone renders evil at me, I want to just, I just, sometimes I want to just, I just, but the love of God constrains me. It's the love of God because he loved me and I love him. No relationship is as precious as the one between you and God. The love of God constrains me. Deacon Max, could you read John 15 and 15? Deacon Max, John 15, verse 15. Okay, I'm turning it right now so we can find it. Okay, John 15 and 15, let's see. 15, 15. Okay, it reads up the following. Parents, here henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knowledge knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. All right. So Jesus said there's even a, a higher level than a servant. He says, I call you friend. See, before you become a friend of God and God tells you things to warn other people, you have to be the servant of God. You have to uh, serve him. That, and I'm again, I'm not talking. That's, a lot of people think this is works. You got to be doing this. You got to be doing that for God. Doing this for God. Doing that. For, no, you need to find out who God is. You need to develop a love relationship with God in his presence, in prayer, on your knees, sitting down, laying down, standing up, however you pray. You need to be in God's face. That's where we belong. That's serving God and reading in this word about him. In Jeremiah 6 and Hebrews 10, the same warnings in Jeremiah 6 in the Old Testament is the same warning in the New Testament, Hebrews 10. The same God. If you reject me, I'll reject you. It's called reprobate. So even a deeper relationship than the serpent once you get to know God, you realize he's your friend. He's your friend. Henceforth, Jesus said, I call you not servants. He said at this point, because they had walked with him for a while, that we have gotten so close. He was talking to his 12 disciples. I call you not servants. You're beyond servants. For the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my father, I've made known unto you. That's when you no God. It's a personal thing. I can tell you all about God. But you got to know God for yourself. Don't reject God. Rejecting God is you're not going to get you his pity. God pities those that fear him. Did you know that? He don't pity people that reject him. He got us praying for y'all. He loves you. But he pities those that fear him and is always in his face and thankful and grateful. Amen. The first commandment is where the blessings of God is. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Thurmans, can I ask you all to read that? Matthew 22, 37 through 40. That's where the blessings of God is not falling out to no false prophets. They want to give you a new revelation, a new thing of this and that. They talk so deep you can't even understand. Let me tell you, the gospel is understandable. The gospel is understandable. The closer you get to God, the more he will reveal himself to you personally. The more you study his word. Amen, the more amen. you pray to him, he reveals himself to you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. That's why I say no relationship, no relationship is as precious as the one between you and God. I'm telling you, get your eyes off of human beings. I don't care if they're mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife, whatever. Get your eyes on God and keep it there. That's what you're going to need to do in this last day. Okay, the Thurmans, please. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40, we've got red letters. It is Jesus talking to us. Jesus Amen. said unto him, 
thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Thank you. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that's your mind, will, and emotion, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. That's what you should be working on. Work on your relationship with God. So when he comes, you will be ready. Just work on it. You don't have to know him like I know him. Work on love. Now, how do you love him with all your heart minds? Get in his face. How do you get in God's face? In prayer. That's how you do it. You get down and say, uh, you humble yourself and say, here I am, Lord. I love you. And then you get in his word and read. You got plenty of lessons from consuming fire teaching and deliverance ministry. I know that. And there's plenty of lessons on Google, all kinds of stuff, or just open up that Bible. You can just read Jeremiah 6 and Hebrews 10. <laughs> that should straighten you up. Amen. And then he said, that's the first and great command. That's first. That's first. Your relationship with God. Then he said, the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, on these two commandments, hang the law and the prophet. And so if you're wondering why people don't love you, because they don't love God. Look, people can't give what they don't have. If they have rejected God, they ain't gonna have no love for you. Do y'all understand that? Because when you reject God, he rejects you. But Jesus got his arms wide open and said, come unto me. That's what he's telling everybody. Everyone has hope. Come unto me. All you that labor in a heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So don't be expecting. We got people that's expecting too much out of people that don't love God. They can't love you if they don't love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They can only give what they have. So just pray for them. And you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. While they're doing whatever they're doing or whatever they're doing and all, you pray. While they're doing whatever they're doing and whatever they're doing and all, you be in the word of God. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. And uh, go with me to math, uh, Psalm 84 and 11. Can I get a volunteer to read? Well, let me have uh, Brother Christopher to read Psalm 84 and 11. Psalm 84 and 11. Yeah. I'm telling you, this, this, mm. this God, we have to understand that we need to be the friend of God. We the friend of everybody else that's rejecting God and expect them to love us and have. They, they can't get what they ain't got. If they ain't loving God, and that's where you learn to love yourself and learn other, love other people, is in God's presence. If they ain't in God's presence, they can't love you. Stop expecting it. And work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. Psalm 84 and 11. Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord, for the Lord God is the sun, shield, Lord will give grace, glory, no good things, but he withhold them that walk right. All right. Oh, and Bert, go, on, go on ahead and read verse 12 while you're at it. Verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Oh my God. This is so powerful. Psalm 84 
verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He'll shield you from all that evil. You need a hiding place? You need a refuge? You want to know where to go when all these people are acting crazy and ignorant and stupid and evil? You want to know where to go? To his presence. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord God will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He won't hold back nothing good from those that walk in the good path, the old path, the way of holiness, seeking his faith, that have made him uh, the love of their life. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No matter what the rest I'm doing, it don't matter what your mama doing, your father, your children, your husband, your wife, them over there. It doesn't matter what they're doing. The only thing that matters is what God wants to do for you. No good thing, no good thing will he uphold from them that walk uprightly. Do you understand that? And look at the next one. Oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man, boy, woman, or girl, that trust in thee. Put your trust in God. Stop putting your feeling bad because this was saying, forget them. Pray for them. I won't say forget them, but pray for them and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what Job did. Job had a hedge of protection around him. Uh, where it says in Psalm 84 and 11, and also in Isaiah, that God will protect you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And no, with, no good thing will he uphold from those that walk uprightly. Up, walk uprightly means stop sinning. Because when you sin, you reject God. Stop it. Just stop. And if you sin, confess it. So the man or the woman that forsakes everything for God, God and walk uprightly in godliness only, God says he, he will withhold no good thing from you. And no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And in Job, uh, we're not going to go there now for the sake of time, but he had a hedge of protection around Job. He had a hedge of protection around Job around his house and around all that he owned and Job wasn't even aware of it. And that's what happens when you're the servant of the Lord and when you're a friend of God, God protects you. You don't even know it. You don't even know. And all that comes out of a love relationship with God because you put God first. And how do you put God first? I have to reiterate this by praying to him and praying to him is not always going to ask it. Praying is like, okay, me and Dean Harrell are married. He's my husband. I'm his wife. If I'm not looking in his face sometime, and I don't want to see his face sometime, what love do I have for him? When you love somebody, you want to see them. You want to hear them. You want to hear how they, how they uh, uh, think. What's, what's on your mind? What's on your heart? Well, let me tell you. This is how you get to the heart of God. He tell you all about himself. Right in here. That's what I mean by pray. Let me go in here and see what the word of God got to say today. People, it's not all that hard. It's not all that stuff them false prophets out there telling y'all, itching y'all ears. Prayer is very simple. Let me see what the word of God says from Genesis to Revelation. It's full of the heart of God. That's how you get to know God. That's how you become his servant. That's how you become his friend. And that's how you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Not just on Sunday in the presence of the pastor, but in our absence also. Sneak away, people. Sneak away from everybody else and seek your God. Seek his face. Amen. Where was we? Hallelujah. Oh, Job. And so God had protected Job. He had a hedge of protection about him, all around him. 
around him, his house, and all that he owned. And, and God said that Job was, uh, there was none righteous in the land like Job. That means Job was in God's face. Job honored God. Job worked out his own salvation with fear and trembling. And Job was always praying for his kids. He always prayed for them because he said in his heart that they may have sinned against God. He feared God. We're supposed to be praying for other people. We pray for other people. But we have a loving relationship with God. And so uh, we must also pray continually for the many people around us that still walk in darkness. People in our own household uh, that the devil uses against you to get on your nerves or whatever. Don't let anybody uh, get on your nerves. They, they may come to afflict you or persecute you or whatever they do. It's because they don't love God. And if they say they love God and they act like the devil, they're lying and the truth ain't in them. You can't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and, and dog out other people. It don't work like that. Every person that truly loves God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength must understand how God feels about lost people. God loves lost people. And so when they are rendering evil toward us, we don't render evil back to them. And it's because we love God. The love of God is what constraineth us. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Uh, Sister Gloria, could you read that from Orville? 2 Corinthians 5, 14. It's the love of God that keeps me doors around. It's the love of God that keeps me from getting vengeance or rendering evil for evil because I love God. That's why. Because I love God and he loves you and he uses us, his righteous instruments. He uses us to pray for you. He said, instead, pray for them. Now that don't mean that I can't tell you about yourself in love. Isaiah 54 told me that, that I can condemn your evil against me. I don't have to take no evil from you. I'm gonna pray for you, but let's let you know this. I don't take no evil from nobody, no devils and no human beings either. I love you and I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to render evil to you, but I'm just going to tell you, I don't have to take that and ain't going to take it. I'm a child of the most high God. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Gloria Allen, have you got Second, um, Second Corinthians Second 5, 14? 14. 9. Second Five, Corinthians. Four. 514. 514. Okay, y'all bear with me because my eyes are up close oh. anymore and I done lost my fine glare. Okay, 5 and 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Yes. So we're going to use that first go. part. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. For the love of Christ constraineth us. See, when, when, when you love God, that first commandment, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, then you learn how to love other people. That's the second commandment. And, and God said, Jesus said, all the law and the prophets, everything out of life hinges on those two. Number one, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling and loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then and only then can you love your neighbor as yourself. So when these people uh, and the devil is using them to get to you, don't even worry about it. You pray for them because God, God uh, Jesus died for everybody. He uses us as instruments of righteousness. That's why he told us to love your enemies and pray for them. So when people are doing the things they do, it's because they they don't they, they're not in God's presence. They have, and when when people reject God, I'm telling you, that's the worst. That that's when you really should pray for them. That's the worst thing you can do is reject God. My God, 
All God wants to do is bless, bless, bless. And you reject God because of whatever, whatever. I mean, what excuses can the devil give you for rejecting God? There are many. But when they do, then pray for them. God says to pray, love your enemies and pray for them. And love just, many, just many, uh, really means pity them. Have mercy on them. Look at them. They wouldn't, that's what Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When people out there doing all kinds of stuff against you and you're a child of God, you should have pity on them and pray for them. Now, if you don't pray for them, then you disobey in God because that's what John, Matthew 5, 24 says. Love your enemies and pray for them. So we have to, as those that are lovers of God, for the love of God, we have to put our desires above God's. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. We can't let our flesh uh, guide us, but he did that to me, so I did it that to that, because we know that in our flesh dwells no good thing. You can't let your, your flesh guide you. You have to do what God says in his word. Amen. And uh, so we rejoice in the love of God, and we wait on God. Romans 8, 28 says, all things. Now listen to this last scripture. All things, all things work together for good to those that do what? Love God and that are called according to his purpose, not their agenda. So I'm telling you again, for the love of God, uh, the love of God, the relationship with God, no relationship is as precious as the one between you and God. This is a warning out of Jeremiah 6 and Hebrews 10, that if you reject God, even today, he will reject you. So work out your own salvation. Don't be worried about what this and that and the other doing with fear and trembling. And learn to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And pray for others. And have mercy on them. Pity on them. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And do that because you love God. And because he loves people. He loves all people. Again, the title of this lesson. For the love of God. And the subtitle, the love of God is what constraineth me or keeps me from doing evil. It's the love of God to keep me from doing evil. I'm going to tell you now what it is. Because I love him. And because I love him, he taught me how to love me. And I love you. It all starts with God. So stop expecting stuff out of people that don't love God and have rejected God. Pray for them. All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to stop the recording.